Welcome to the show today. We are joined by a guest that is the president of 3CJ Global. Welcome, Charles Curran. Good to see you, sir. Joining us today, we have the president of 3CJ Global, a man who has been touted as one of the leading African-European speakers, who not only has a passion for corporate and leadership training, but for personal development and self-actualization. I'd like to welcome to the show, Mr. Charles Kieran. Charles, awesome. How are you, sir? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I took your word. You also, keep stealing my words. That's, that's mine. Listen, have I, uh, is it copyright issue, Charles? He's oh. patented. It's all oh my days, all oh my days. I, I only use the word awesome. Well, that's, yeah. well, that's awesome that you use the word awesome. Oh, did I say awesome again? Oh, you, did. <laughs> you did. You did. You did. You did. You did. Listen, Charles, it is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when I see Charles, Charles say to me, Silburn, and I say, Charles. <laughs> Am I correct? Indeed. Fantastic. Listen, Indeed. Charles, it's great having you on the show today. And, um, you know, as a time like this now, great thinkers, person like yourself, this is an inspiring, educational, motivational show. I use the entertaining bit last. Right. Because what I want to do is to motivate and to inspire. Of all the guests that comes on the show, all is at least one thing I want them to have, at least something inspirational, mm. something inspiring. That's good. Okay? Fantastic. That's good. Charles, you, you're the, a personal development coach, a leadership coach, and a corporate coach to list some of the aspects of coaching, training, and speaking engagements you cover. But I want you to give our viewers a little insight into Charles Kieran, the man. Just a little bit about you. I know there's a much. I would have time, but give me the, the nutty gritty, the ingredients. Yeah. Uh, that's quite interesting. It's quite um, a, a deep question. Yes. Uh, I guess it depends on the aspect of mm -hmm. Charles the man you'd like to know about because mm -hmm. there are several. Uh, mm -hmm. But I guess what I'm going to go for is, is a man who has been tried and tested over the yes. years, a man who is acquainted with adversity mm -hmm. and has um, experienced tremendous amount of adversity, failures in life before any eventual success, or before arriving at this point. Yes of my life, right? A deeply philosophical individual, a spirited and highly committed Christian, mm -hmm. um, a man who believes in brilliance and excellence and, yes. you know, <clears throat> and constantly strives yes. to, to be one of those. Mm -hmm. um, a, a father, a husband, mm -hmm. uh, a proud black citizen of mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. I believe, in the excellency of being black, mm -hmm. okay? I like to bust stereotypes. Um, wherever I have been as a person, yeah. I have endeavored to excel and to be a great ambassador of my race. Yes. I guess that essentially quantifies yes. me a little bit. That's, that's, that's very awesome. And I, mean, I like the bit where you said that actualization of oneself, it is like we're always aspiring to reach, yeah. but would you say that there's a point where one can say they reach or they're always just reaching? Well, I mean, you know the story, <laughs> you know, in terms of, uh, by the way, it's great to see you. I haven't yes. seen you for a little while. Yes, yes. I've had lots of invitations to be on your show, but yes. I wanted you to have a few more air miles under mm -hmm. your wings yes. and to be properly ready before yes. we engage, yes. you know. This is a, this is a tough one, in the day. <laughs> a serious one, it's a serious cookie. <laughs> So I've been watching and I feel, mm. you know, you are becoming a celebrity. Before you get too big, I thought I better appear ah. on your show. Well, you know, yeah. Charles, one of the things I say to persons that come on the show, I always say to them, uh, while I'm not looking for the big name, I'm looking for persons that I see something in. Yeah. So I say to them, I want you on the show so I can climb with you as you climb, you know, instead of act. And, and I have to say this, Charles, at the start, because, you know, there are persons in people's lives that sometimes, uh, they call it footprints in the sand. You know? Yep, that's And right. you know, Jesus carrying someone and they said, where, where is, where is the four, four foot, foot, footprints? And said, there was only two at this point. And there are persons that come into one's life, Charles, 
that sometimes just tamper footprint, mm -hmm. even if it's at a moment. That's right. You said something a while ago, we haven't seen each other for two years. Yes. But we have only met maybe under just over two years. Yes, that's true. But Charles said something to me one day, and this is what you said to me, which I say to you all the while, which I always remind you what you said. Yes. And this is what Charles said to me. Silburn, oh Silburn, if only Silburn know who Silburn is. It's amazing. And when you said that to me, Charles, that completely, I know we, we met for some other thing, but my, you, you messed up my brain that day. Yes. <laughs> you messed up my thinking. Yes, yes. And that's powerful. Well, I met you at a very critical time in your mm. life. Mm. You were equally making some serious transitions. Mm. You know, you were in between options. Yes. And uh, we had an amazing opportunity that you came to preview. Mm -hmm. And somebody, a close friend of ours, uh, Charles, invited you mm -hmm. to meet with me at the hotel. And I looked at you and I looked at your potential, your talent, mm -hmm. as we, we, we engaged yes. for a while. I remember buying you some lunch. I haven't yes. forgotten. Yes. Yes. Okay, you haven't repaid that. <laughs> so I, still, I still remember that. And you know, I, saw, I, you know, I looked at you, I thought, this guy doesn't know what he has. Mm. And then I made a statement, because it was a time in your life where it was time for you to move up. Yes. And you took that challenge on and you never forgot. Yes. And you were yes. doing great things. Thanks, thanks. Okay, doing great things. I'm yeah. excited to be, that's, 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 to be here. That's, that's awesome, Charles. And, yeah. and the whole essence of even this discussion is about taking us as a people. Yes. You said something, the global black man of the global community, the yeah. global world. Yeah. Now, you had an exceptional successful career in the corporate consultancy world before beginning your professional training and speaking services. Mm. What motivated you to take that turnaround, what has been the most rewarding aspect of that leap to of fate mm. and going on your own. Yes. Is it your own really? Mm. <laughs> it's um, a classic one. Interesting. Um, yeah. I have been very fortunate mm. in my life. I say fortunate because I've had amazing teachers. Yeah. I've had some of the best people in the world coach or mentor me. Mm -hmm. um, so from that perspective, I have been exposed for a very long time into the very best of yes. training, of leadership, you know, of sales, uh, excellence, of, uh, you know, is brilliance, yes. essentially. And um, I have been a very good student. Mm -hmm. um, it was time for me to also become a teacher because my background is quite varied. Yes. For over 27 years, I was quote unquote in the sales business. Mm -hmm. And within that period of time, I remembered owning my own company twice in the sales uh, industry, uh, losing both companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of those, of course, I was made bankrupt at 27. I recovered from that bankruptcy. Fortunately, it was annulled after five weeks. The judge mm -hmm. felt it was very unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was annulled. So that was very, very fortunate for me. But I experienced ba mm -hmm. bankruptcy at 27. Then fought back. Uh, went into the world of network marketing mm -hmm. in uh, 1991, exposed me to a whole new world yes. of high performance yes. and lifestyle, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I'm still in love with network marketing till this very day yes. because it taught me some of the most amazing things. It mm -hmm. in fact set me up yes. for what I'm doing today. Fortunately, I didn't just mess around with network marketing, I became a truly successful networker yeah. because I got to the top twice, top of the table twice with mm -hmm. two separate companies building over tens of thousands yes. of people in my organization. And every month, 10 days a month, I was in a different country in Europe providing yes. leadership to the team, yes. uh, you know, teaching essentially self-employment, how to employ yourself, mm -hmm. the discipline to be in, in self-employment mm -hmm. and what it takes to reach the very, very top yes. of your career. So. Uh, after 20 something odd years in network marketing with five separate companies, two of those I got to the very top as I mentioned, and yes. you know what it means to get yes. to the top. Yes. It was really it was a superstardom in, yes. you know, at the top of the tree. Yes. Um, I have seen that, been, there, been there, done that, won the t-shirt, mm -hmm. helped hundreds literally of individuals uh, succeed. So I know what it yeah. takes to succeed. Now, it's interesting what you said there. I, had a, I have a series which I call Don't Go With The Flow. It's a one minute word which I just put out there and yeah. one which I did was uh, 
being on the field or being on the or being in the stand. Being on the field or being in the stand. And what you're saying is about being a key player yep. on the field. Yep. But then someone said to me again, what about making the game? Mm. So there are three aspects. The stand, yep. on the field, playing, yep. or in the game. Which one is a charge? Yes. The, yes. Well, I think it's a combination of yes. the field and the game, you mm. know, because it's not just playing, but it's playing to win. Yes. Yes. Or it's making a difference, not just being a number to be counted, but yes. actually becoming the very best you're capable yes. of becoming. Mm. I am intense as an individual, and my wife tells me, oh, I mean, I have to find time to kind of, uh, I, I'm very intense yes. individual. Once I set my heart on something, it's got to mm. be done, yes. that kind of individual. Uh, but obviously, I also have the bigger picture, yeah. you know. But my first um, career in network, I call it career because I was in there for 11 years with mm -hmm. one particular company. Uh, that company, I don't mind mentioning Juice Plus, NSA, because it's very close to my heart. My wife is in Juice Plus. Yeah, we were the, <laughs> we, we were the original pioneers. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, I got to the point where I was one of only 12 of the most senior people in the whole of Europe mm -hmm. to achieve what is called the 39 Club. Wow. which was the highest designation at that time, right? I was one of three from the UK, the Germans, the Italians, the so on and so forth. Uh, so the original crop of mm. the high level performers, I was proud to be one of those, mm. all right? And NSA was in my blood, yes. Juice Plus was in my blood. Yes, yes. But my, that business failed after 11 years. Mm. When I mean failed, I tried to rebuild it after 14, 15 months. It wasn't going nowhere, mm. I began to have prophecy you're not meant to be here anyway. anyway so I, I, I made that leap. Charles, listen, let's go back to when we first met. Origin. How is Origin? Origin <laughs> was an idea yeah. way ahead of its time. Uh -huh. Amazing idea, but way ahead of its time. Mm. You know, as you know, we were dealing with the malnutrition issue affecting millions of children mm. along, you know, around the world. Yes. And the then CEO had this visionary idea of how to intervene mm -hmm. with the right nutritional product mm -hmm. that will keep these babies alive. Most mm -hmm. of them died before the age of five, as you know, yes. the age of two, age of five. So it was an amazing idea and that brought us on board and brought lots of people. Yes. I was one of three founders of Origin mm -hmm. Globally, my old friend and CEO, the then Fred Steege, who yes. founded the company. Mm -hmm. I had known Fred for over 24 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fred brought me in at the start, and I myself, another chap, Maurice Van Oppenven, mm -hmm. Maurice based in Norway, and we essentially were the field generals. Fred yes. was the CEO who ran the corporate mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as you know, I was um, appointed vice president mm -hmm. uh, for to open up Africa, the UK, yes. Ireland, part of the different parts of the world. And I was able to do that successfully, and we built thousands and thousands of ex, you know, excellent individuals. Yeah. And I went into the world of consulting. Yes. Okay, consulting to senior executives. Uh, senior executives, the interesting thing about senior executives, uh, I was helping with coaching them in their career success. Mm -hmm. For a senior person, when they look to make a transition or change a role, yeah. or if their role has been made redundant, yeah. it takes an average of eight to 24 months for a CEO or for a top flight director to find another job. Yes. But within that period of time, they begin to lose confidence mm. because it takes only so much. I mean, imagine searching for eight months yes. with no traction. Because you, they're normally overqualified in some Well, not, not only that, yeah. one job advertised in the newspaper, yeah. say the stand, Evening Standard, mm. sorry, the uh, Telegraph, mm. will generate about 2,000 responses mm. for one job as yeah. for a CEO. Yeah. So these individuals have been so used to running the show. Yes. Now they are out in the market looking for a new job mm. or a new position. Yes. Now, most CEOs can't find roles through a recruitment agency or through mm. the telegraph. Mm. They'll have to understand what is called the unadvertised or the invisible job market, where most of the roles are found. That means you have to become brilliant at networking. Yes. You have to create high visibility. Yes. We had to teach them how to interview for success. Guess mm. what? Because they've been on the other side of the table all interviewing these, other yeah. people. Yeah. Now it's their turn to sit on the other side mm. and to be interviewed, mm. whether by the board or by the chairman or whatever. And they were unprepared. 
So we have to coach them on how to interview for mm. success, hire, write the right types of CVs yes. from eight, nine pages CV to a yeah. two, two and a half achievement oriented right. CV. Right. Uh, show them how to create visibility and most importantly, be a buddy, i.e. Yes. a place for them to come mm. because either their wives or their husbands are tired of seeing them at home. So this is what you call high level? High level. High level stuff, mm. including major generals of the British Army. In mm. my office, I interviewed over 3,000 of some of the brightest people in Europe mm. looking to make transition in our beautiful offices in Bishopsgate and yes. Regent Street in London. Yes. And they come in to see us. They pay us a lot of money. Mm. All right, It wasn't my company. I was working for the oldest yes. career management company in the world. And I, as, as a senior consultant, so I would see them help them, and then I work with over 400. Wow. When you spend time with senior people for nearly seven years, you know how to think, you know how to operate, you speak mm. their language. So this is why when I launched into my personal development, yes. which was the next transition for me, professional speaking, obviously mm. I had to be trained as a speaker, yes. okay? And I operate mainly in the inspirational speaking space, mm -hmm. and I run a lot of, uh, uh, international conferences because you need people to essentially en en ensure that the day or the yeah. days run smoothly. Yes. All right, provide discussion points amongst prime ministers, presidents, and heads you, of government. And you, and you cover somebody's shell, this high level shell. Of course. Shell. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I, I work with a lot of senior government officials, mm. leaders, corporate organizations, mm. because they are looking for the best. You yeah. got to remember senior people also need to be served. Yes. They need to be looked after. Yes. And they have a very low tolerance what, Charles, for low level work. Yeah. Charles, what would you say is the, the nucleus, the embodiment of what drives you? Well, number one, a passion to be the best God created me to mm. be. Not to be better than silver, yeah. but to be the best Charles can be. Yes. My competition is against me. So that lane which is created, designed, no a blueprint for you. No question. Because the more you know, as you begin to really understand the essence of creation, yes. your calling in this, uh, this, in this amazing world, mm. you, you find out it's not about competing with others. Yes. It's about being the best brand yes. you can be, the mm. best individual you can be, because that is now your gift or your answer yes. back to your creator. Now, we have heard it said that we currently, Charles, are in a psychosic age. Is it? Psychosic age. Psychozoic. Psychozoic yeah. age. That's a key one. Yeah. Please elaborate on what this means exactly and the changing face of traditional corporate categories capitalistic fallacies and what it means for the new age of entrepreneurship and individual wealth creation outside the standard corporate setting. And I set the stage again for that because what is happening now with society, I mean young people, everyone is becoming entrepreneurs, everybody is now, it's changed, the dynamics have changed now, yes. whereby there's no nine to five, there's no pension thing, everybody yeah. up to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Break that down, Charles. Mm, <laughs> well, very, very loaded. I'm glad you asked that question. Mm. Um, I first learned that term mm. from uh, one of my oldest teachers. Uh, this is not nearly 20 years ago, Brian mm. Tracy. Mm. Okay. Uh, he said, we are now in the age, the psychozoic age. Mm. And the psychozoic age essentially means the age of the mind. Yes. Right? We are living in the psychozoic age. In less than four generations, we have moved from the agricultural era, where mm. the ownership of farms, yeah. of cattle, yes. animals was considered as wealth. We fast tracked our way from that age mm. through what is known as the industrial age, industrial age yes. where the ownership of factories, machinery, production, equipment mm -hmm. was recognized as wealth. Mm -hmm. We went through that age to the age we are currently living in now, which is called the age of the mind, the age mm -hmm. of knowledge and information. In this age, wealth, power is contained in yes. the person that you are. Mm -hmm and in the way that you think, yes. rather than in the things you have acquired, like your MBAs, your degrees, mm. so yeah. on and so forth. 
Today is about specialization. specialization Today is yeah. about expertise. Yes. Today is about who is the key person, mm. who is the key man, who do mm. I go to to have problems solved. Who is the top dog? Yes, yeah, senior mm. people, decision makers are looking for players who can solve their problems. Mm. They're not looking for degrees. Yes. It helps to open the doors if you have mm. those, but that is not what they're looking for, mm. right? So this is the age where you need to have answers. You need to be an expert, the go-to person yes. in a specific area of specialization. Yes. Do you follow? So the age of the mind, uh, the psychozoic age is driven by three things. This current age, first is information, mm -hmm. clearly with knowledge. Yes. Second, of course, is technology. Yes. Everything's driven by technology today. And the third, of course, is competition, because yeah. the world has never been as competitive as it is, as it is today. <clears throat> you know mm -hmm. that I know that. One job right now that's advertised out there, bank mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. minimum for one bank job, you have anywhere from four to 700 respondents Responded. for one job. So what sets you out from amongst the crowd mm -hmm. What makes them want to come to you for answers? Yes. In my line of work, in the speaking business, in the training business, in the consulting business, is highly volatile, number yeah. one. Number two, highly competitive, yes. right? So why should they come to Charles? I must have set myself apart yes. from the crowd. A, I developed, identified my niche. Mm. I recognize that I am at home with the corporate world. Yes. I'm at home with senior players. Mm -hmm. I've been to events where I was talking to the crowd and it was like I was speaking Chinese. They didn't understand what you're they saying. Didn't they, didn't, they didn't connect. So I learned very early on where my market yes. was. But when I'm talking to decision makers mm -hmm. or professionals, they come to me. They want to shake my mm -hmm. hands. They want to say thank you. So therefore, you're not the man that will just go to an, any no. invitation. No, you'll never find me. Scrutinize. No, you'll never, you've never, you've never find me there. So ladies and gentlemen, guess what? He's on this red chair. So you know what that means about the Silburn Show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, we're going to take a break now until um, for part two for next week. Okay. Well, tell me, um, what is your last? Give us some uh, beautiful inspirational comment. Well, what I about? want to say, yes. the immortal yes. Dr. Martin Luther King, yes. he said, if you have been called upon to be a street sweeper, mm. he said you must learn to sweep streets even as Beethoven played music, mm. even as Shakespeare wrote poetry, mm. even as Michelangelo painted. Mm. He said, you must sweep streets so good mm. that all the hosts of heaven will rise up yes. and declare, there Very lives a great street sweeper awesome. who did his or her job well. So I think the message there for us, mm. Sylvan, is whether you're a talk show host, mm. he said, you must do your work yes. as Shakespeare did his, mm -hmm. as Michelangelo did his, mm -hmm. And as Beethoven did his, yes. who wrote some of the most amazing symphonies, Fantastic. he said you must do it so brilliantly. Fantastic. So whatever you've been called to do, do it to the it. best. The best of your ability. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for part one. And we'll join next week for part two, where we'll talk about the black consumer and the astute man, Charles Kirill. Thank you. I, I always like to paraphrase by saying we must not. This generation, of black people are the most financially astute, are the most traveled, are the most educated, are the most enlightened, are the most brand conscious and sophisticated. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, the most educated group in the US. Guess who? The most educated group in the US. Um, immigrant group, Nigerians. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like, and don't forget to comment, but first subscribe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me encourage you to keep watching the Silbon Sidal Show. This man is going places, and with all our collective help and assistance, we're gonna create another beast in the entertainment and talk show world.
He deserves it. He's worked hard for it. Keep liking the Silbon Sidal Show and keep um, watching on YouTube and all the various channels. Okay, thank you very much.